Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. This is your product review video on a Wednesday. This one today is over the Brodex 3 Extra um, 366 CNC ported big block Chevy head. This one is um, pretty common and I'm going to go through it. I flowed the head. I'll tell you how I think about it, what's going to be to end up getting done to this heads. And hopefully you'll get to see this in the same video. If not, it'll be on a later video, but we are going to go over this one. So this head is just, I brought my Brodex catalog just to kind of show you. The head that it is, now this is an older Brodex catalog, so I don't know how it looks in the new one. The new one's inside. And he's in the office. Anyway, this is the one. So it says 3 extra and it says CNC ported. For some odd reason, it doesn't have on this catalog, it doesn't say 366. As you can tell, what it's supposed to flow is, I'm looking at the right one, supposed to flow 426. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you it doesn't do that. But um, it still flows pretty good. So we'll, this is the head, and we'll talk about the stuff from it and what I think of it. For the record, just helping you guys out in case you're wanting to save some money, this is the 366. They make an ASCAS version of this head. It has a CNC chambered. It's CNC bowl blended on both intake and exhaust. CNC gasket matched on the intake, not the exhaust port. And that one is this one right here, 363. And if you look at the flow numbers, just comparing the two, which I don't have one here, otherwise I would. Um, it's not that much lower. So you're looking at 307, 305, 360 to 362, 399 to 394. And that one was actually better. 430 to 416, that one was actually better with the ASCAS. 433 to 423, that was better as the ASCAS. 436 to 426. So in that case, for some of the curve, it's actually better. Um, but I haven't floated them. I have had them before, but I don't have any new flow numbers at the same time to give a fair comparison. But anyway, let's talk about what this head is and what I do like and don't like about it. Okay, it comes with 119 cc chambered, which is good. It has a 2300 and a 160, or sorry, 188 exhaust valve. They're 45 degree seats. So it's uh, great. Those seats will last you a long time and it works really well. This is how they look when you get them. Okay, they're, they're nice. They really do look nice. But I'm gonna get a flashlight because I wanna show you something because I've talked about this before in other videos. And some of you are like, what's that hole for? And this one doesn't have it. Brodix doesn't put them in. Okay, this is the long runner, so let me go through this real quick. There's a long runner, and there's a short runner for big blocks. This one, it chambers this way. If you look at it, the air on the short runner is smashing into the wall. On the long runner, it's actually coming north towards the center. Usually, the long runner outflows this short runner. Just letting you know, that's how it is on a big block. Right here is what I'm trying to show you. That bulge right there, if you looked at my profiler head, that's got a hole right there. That's where the head bolt is. It's right there. Brodix, when they CNC port theirs, they leave it where this is covered up. And I've talked to Brodix about this before because you can actually gain some CFM by porting just by taking out this little notch here, even though it exposes the head bolt hole. It doesn't hurt anything as long as you seal your threads here. And then on the top side, you don't get oil in, you don't get water if your block's wet. Um, a lot of heads don't even, or don't have this. They already have a hole like the darts do too. But I asked products why they did that, and they said the biggest reason is they got tired of people calling in and asking questions why my head has a hole in it, and they have to explain there's nothing wrong with it, and it's going to run fine, and they just got tired of those questions. I mean, they take a lot of tech calls anyway during the day, so they started just doing it like this where it's covered up, so it saves them some kind of hassle, which I understand from a business standpoint, but you can gain some more, a little bit more flow removing that, because that's about 30,000 material that you can get rid of and really helps go in the air over the short side. They're only on the long runner. They're not on the short runner. So there's your little thing. Now, um, this head might look a little dirty because I do have to brag on a customer somewhat because the customer sent this in and all he wanted me to do was check them out and then um, do a valve job if they needed. And I told him, might as well, if, you know, for the engine size he has, you could be better off putting a bigger intake valve in. We'll just go ahead and redo the valve job anyway. But I got to show you these boxes that he sent him in because I actually am proud. I know it's getting off topic from the head, but I've never seen anything like this. This is the box he sent him in. You're like, that doesn't look like a box. You're right, it looks like a wooden crate. He literally built a wooden crate. I've, I've never had a customer spend so much time and detail on his ending in a set of heads. And I hate to say it, but the wood probably costs more than the whole entire shipping. Because wood being so expensive as it is, and that's a nice piece. These straps actually went around the head and kept it from moving. And the, there was a towel underneath it to keep it from scratching the deck. Very nice duty. 
that's the top plate that actually screws on. Very impressive. Anyway, so the reason why I bring that up is because the ports look dirty. This is not how it came from uh, Brodix. Brodix, I'm sure, had them clean. It's wood dust that just kind of gathered. I cleaned this port and this port just so I could flow it. But I wanted to explain what you saw. So it'd be like, is that rust? It's not rust, it's wood dust. Um, but anyway, ports are good. Chamber 119, um, which is, works for most things. Now their CNC work does leave this little notch here. See that? It's not very big, but it doesn't look very big, but it's definitely a lip that hits there. Anytime the air, the air is coming off the top cut and hits this. So usually this really hurts your lower lift flow numbers. It's on all the way around. Now it's not horrible. There's been some that's been far worse, but that's definitely not helping things. Okay, just letting you know there. The second thing I wanna talk about is the surface finish on the deck of, of Brodick's heads. They seal, I will say this, but I know they're trying to blast these heads out as fast as possible. So they're feeding them through the, um, their mill pretty quick. And if you look at the surface finish, you can see what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and surface these anyway just because I want them to be like a glass finish. And this brings up something else I've been waiting to show someone. Do you see this from here to here on the deck? See that swoop mark here? The reason why this happens is because there's a cutter blade that goes across and it's cutting, it's going choop, 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 and it's just cutting. Well, what it's doing is it's hitting aluminum until right there. This is a seat ring and it's hitting, it goes from cutting aluminum to hitting the steel and it causes this, um, this coloration here. Now, is it any higher or lower? No, but I wanted to let you know that this happens whenever the, the cutter hits this. So typically, whenever I do a valve job, I try to leave the, where there's just a sliver of aluminum here anyway. So if someone was to surface this, the whole thing looks perfectly flat. I don't have to explain to the customer. It's flat, I promise you. This is just discoloration from where it grabs some of the iron and um, causes it to discolor. But you can see it there and there. It's uh. It's not, I wouldn't say it's common, but this does happen from time to time. These heads, this is one of my beefs with the Brodix, and it's not really a beef. They do seal up, and I know they're trying to get them through, but um, the several manufacturers have a much cleaner surface finish. But I really can't knock them for it, because you can say what you will, they still seal. So anyway, there's that. Let's look at some of the other views, and we'll talk about some of the other features. Okay, this is the intake ports. They are rectangular. Um, the tuck tapes to cover up the customer's name. I don't know if he wants to be revealed or not. But anyway, um, and then you see the monoline clay from where I used to flow it. Uh, it's a rectangular port that fits the most common manifolds. So that's really good. The rockers themselves, the one I think, this one takes stud mounts, so you don't even have to buy shaft rockers. You can, they offer them for it. But Brodix and all their heads, they offer, they have, they don't offer, but they come with helicals and the threads. Now, a lot of manufacturers will just have them cast in and then threaded that way. I do like the helicoils better. I'll straight up tell you because I've had several where the um, cast in threads have pulled out and it sucks. However, I will say this too. I have seen these get pulled out as well because in Brodix, and, and he, Brodix is not the only manufacturer to do this, several other manufacturers don't leave a lot of material between here and the top of the port, so there's not really that much threads. There's, I mean, this one isn't too bad. The helicoil grabs a larger area, so it helps too. But I do wish manufacturers themselves would raise the bar up or raise this whole area up so that it would, it gives more threads for this to make contact with. But I know that opens a whole can of worms with the rockers coming up and a whole bunch of other things. That's one of those things. I rarely see them pull out the exhaust ones because the exhaust is the threads go further deeper in. So it's pulling from a larger area. And I'm not saying, I know some people only hear half of what I say, or not even half. I'm not saying Brodix pulls their helicoils. What I'm saying is I think the helicoils are stronger and it makes it less likely to pull them. But you could still have, even though it's got helicoils, you can still have these pull out. When that happens, then there's a further option. And this is a, it's an insert that's like big around like this, and it's a metal insert that goes in there. Those are by far the best because they grab material from a wider area and they're stronger and they're a better way to go. There's only one manufacturer that puts that on there and that's the RHS big block heads for their aluminum ones. They're the only ones. The sad part is their heads are, they're pretty good, but um, you have a hard time with availability and they just don't have a whole lot of options. But they're the only manufacturer that does. Um, the others don't. I like the helicoils. 
I want you to understand and hear that properly. I like that they put helicoils in. I'd rather have helicoils than having threads just in the in the head. That's a me thing. Now, Brodick also machines this right here, you see here, because if you want to use a, one, a rocker, they have a one piece bar that goes across here and it's machined for it. If you got some of the older 366 ones, they weren't that way. I did a set of heads many years for a customer that weren't machined for that. Granted, they were very old, but all these have it. You'll still have like an, uh, one for the exhaust that are separate, but they usually have a place that bolts onto the stand here, like a little notch in their stand that holds it there. Anyway, there's that. Um, let's look at the exhaust side. Now that's some good exhaust ports. The 366 and the ASCAS 363 have much larger exhaust ports, which I like. Um, for at least for most of what I do, they needed something this size. If you get like the 335 3 Extra, the ports are smaller. That's the ASCAS one, but even the 332, their exhaust ports are smaller because they're typically intended to be on a smaller cubic inch. But anyway, nice exhaust ports here. Now, I'll go ahead and warn you, Brodix raises the exhaust ports on all the three extra heads. Because of that, you're going to need a longer head bolts for these here. So, just letting you know, if you choose to get these, they take a longer rock, uh, head stud or head bolt in these ones. And that's common for any head that has a raised up exhaust port. Brodix raises it a bit more, I think, than some of the other um, manufacturers. But their exhaust ports also flow more because of it. Speaking of flow, let's look at the flow sheet. Okay, here's the flow sheet. Now, I flowed this on my Sanyas bench, and I flowed it with a 4.625 bore because this head, and these, by the way, here's a view of the short side in case you're wondering. Really nice. That's the short one's got a nice radius. This is a long one, so a bit different. Really nice. But anyway, back to this. This is going on a 582, which is a 4.6 bore. I have the bore sleeves I have are 4.625 and a 4.310. This was on a 4.625. It's the closest one I had to what he'll use. Anyway, um, this is the long runner, which as I which would be this one. I told you typically they flow more, and if you look at it, it for the most part does, except for at the end. And this being the short runner. So the long runner, if we look at it at 400, my numbers I care about really are four, the ones I like the most. I care about them all, but the ones that are the most important to me are four, six, and one. So if I look up 400, it's 287. And on the long runner or short runner, it's 286.5. They're really close to the same. At 600, you have 387 to 363. You can see how the short runner is flowing less. That's not a really that bad of a number, by the way, for 600. And if I look at one inch, this is like, why do you care? No cam gets there. This is the exact reason why. It flows 389 at one inch. And 407 on the short runner. Why do I care? Look at it. But it's telling me it backed up in flow. And before someone says, well, that means you shouldn't have a cam that lifts over. Looking at this, it shouldn't have a cam over 800 lift. You know it's only going to spend part of its time there. If you had a higher lift cam, let's say even a one inch, it still would spend most of its time in that range. But anyway, and I look at it just because it's telling me that there's something velocity wrong with the port because it's if the flow starts dropping, it means the air speeds aren't right over the short side and you've got issues in the port that, sh that you could address to make it flow more um, and perform better, I should say. So that's the reason why I look at one inch. However, peak flow on the long runner is 406. And if you look on the peak runner on the short runner, it's 407. If you notice, it keeps flowing all the way up. Short runners are kind of that way just because of the nature of the beast because it's not really flowing that well anyway. So it's not moving up air to cause their initially to be a short side. And it's just the design of the short side and the way they do it on the short runner, which is short runner, different than the long runner, it's able to support air, more airflow at one inch than the long runner is. Now this is exhaust flow really strong really really strong and this is with no exhaust pipe so good numbers there now before i go any further i want to show you what i flowed it with the cut these are not with what you would get from brodix maybe that might cause some of the differences but i don't think so i actually think it flowed better because of what i'm about to show you because the customer sent in these valves to have them flowed with because these are what initially what he's going to use these are freya comp plus valves these are more expensive than brodix valves that weigh a little bit less and they typically flow more now, I did not put a back cut on this because on the Freya um, Comp Plus valve, which I would have, and I will when the final ones get done, they have this radius, like this cast into it already. And it's almost like a back cut, but not quite. And that's what's here. So, in all honesty, this valve will probably outflow the Brodix valve anyway that came with it, just letting you know. And this is the exhaust valve. Now, it's not a tulip one. 
it has more tulip in its design than the Brodix one and it doesn't have a back cut. So there's what, I wanna point that out difference. It is different from the flow you might get from Brodix anyway because of these valves are different. I'm just showing you the head and what they flow with these. So hopefully that gives you some information, but let me show you what's gonna be, what's getting done to the head. Here's the head. I just got done doing the valve job on one of them. The valve job is now cut out to a 2350, still the same exhaust valve size of 188. These are still 45 degree seats. Now, hopefully, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to edit this one in or get it done by the time I put this video out. Hopefully you'll see me with the flow numbers with it um, done, which should be not just the valve job, because you can see how it leaves a little lid ledge here. That's because it's making the throat it's not really making the throat it's making the throat slightly larger but percent wise since the valve's bigger the percent of the throat compared to the valve is actually probably smaller now than what it was in other words i think it was like a 92 percent throat i haven't measured the first one over there but the stock one's probably 92 percent but that was on a 2300 that same diameter will be much smaller of course on a 2350 in other words that same diameter is going to be not going to be 92 percent at 2350 it's going to be smaller and that's kind of why you see this ridge here. It's cutting more material, but that throat percentage is actually gonna drop because the valve size is larger. I know I'm probably confused yet on that one. But anyway, redid the valve job, cut to a larger intake valve. I'm gonna, of course, I can't flow like this. It'd be a bad idea, Look, it would look bad. I'm gonna do some chamber work to blend that out. And then, of course, retouch up the throat. And then, like I told you, um, with the deck surface, I'm going to go ahead and surface it so it's nice, clean finish for the customer. But hopefully you'll get to see that all flo um, floating with that with this head on this video. If it didn't, I'm sorry. I just didn't have enough time to put it in because I didn't get it done in time for me to put out the video. If not, it'll be on a later one. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching.